Silent treatment apparently alive and well in Washington, D.C. A new report claiming former President Obama and current President Trump have not spoken since Trump's inauguration over a year ago. But during his reign as president, President Obama spent years mocking President Trump, and both personally and professionally, often laughing at his political ambition. Obama's unlikely successor has now been president for over a year, and he's been tearing down Obama's legacy one executive order at a time. Obamacare, the Paris Climate Accord, and net neutrality, only a handful of the many policies that have been demolished. So does our president actually believe he's helping the country, or is this just spite and revenge and a little good grudge fudging for his political nemesis? Joining me now, Fox News politics editor Chris <laughs> Steyerwald. Welcome back to the show. Oh, you got me with that one. A grudge fudge is the yep. worst. It's the worst fudge of all. That's absolutely right. And you the don't send it at, at Christmas time. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about this, because uh, President Obama openly mocked uh, then civilian Trump in 2011 and on 2016 went on Jimmy Kimmel and said, well, at least I'm going to be, at least I was a president. You'll never be. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Donald Trump also insults uh, Barack Obama constantly yes. and says he, he, he is he said he was not even born in America. That's true. Uh, so so they have both uh, been uh, Trump has been more heinous, but they have had a very unpleasant, undignified, ungentlemanly, unworthy relationship mm -hmm. and back and forth uh, over the course of their lifetimes or uh, over the course, but course of their public careers. Even even from different parties, even when a, an administration transfers from one party to another, mm -hmm. they still talk. Uh, president Clinton and, and the elder President Bush, they talked. The younger Bush and President Clinton, they spoke. And of course, uh, President George H.W. Bush spoke with Ronald Reagan when he succeeded him in the presidency, but these two literally have not talked. Well, I mean, I think the degree of the ex-presidents club is a thing, and they definitely have, there's a, a, a very strong history dating back to Washington of being helpful and collegial mm -hmm. to your successors, and also being respectful of those who have gone before you. You don't prosecute them. You you, you don't do you 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 let them go in peace, provided that they go. As mm -hmm. long as they go, then you let them go in peace. I, but I am sure that Ronald Reagan and Jimmy Carter did not have a lot of constructive conversations. Just as I'm sure as George, uh, George I'm sorry that Bill Clinton did not have a lot of uh, helpful conversations with George H.W. Bush. Yeah. That's just not how it goes. Now, in this case... Although you have... Reagan did call Carter on several occasions sure, and said, sure, sure. Wiener, Neener, got the hostages, click. <laughs> Psych. Yeah. Um, I, w I would just say that in this case, both things can be true. Trump can be animated by malice mm -hmm. in attacking Obama's uh, career and his accomplishments, but also they can be the things that he uh, and the people around him believe are better for the country. I think that uh, we don't know, uh, we have no reason to believe that Trump is acting in a way that he believes will harm the country yeah. in order to spite Obama. I'm going to give no, him the benefit but he of the also, doubt. He also ran against Obama as much he ran, as he ran against Hillary totally. because he, totally. he, he was running essentially against his legacy and President Obama saw Hillary Clinton as the natural successor who would preserve that legacy and that was incredibly important to President Obama and he spoke about that so you know he's annoyed that uh, President Trump takes a chisel and dismantles it every chance you get because not only is he doing that for personal spite and gain but he's also making good on these campaign promises and servicing the base at the same time. Well, I'm sure there is much disappointment among Democrats, and I can't, I don't know what's in the mind of the former president, yeah. but there is much discontentment in the minds of Democrats that things have not gone worse for Trump. Trump has gotten lucky breaks. Uh, he has had successful execution in key areas, yeah. uh, the, the tax cut. And, and regulations. Uh, and trying to, and, well, trying to avert the shutdown. It, it's hard. The, one of the worst things about our politics, Kennedy, is when one party roots for the failure of the other. Republicans did it to Obama. Democrats are doing it to Trump. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the things that makes it stinky. I agree completely. And I think we should all hope and pray for the health of the nation, particularly the economy, that, uh, you know, a, a good economy lifts people out of poverty. It is just plain fact and science. And it's, it makes you a good person to want good things to happen, even to people you don't like. And that's no grudge fudging. <laughs> and you ended on the highest note possible. <laughs> Chris Dyerwald, thank you so much. Ma'am. Mm.